Hey folks, Jackto here, wishing you an incredible happy Dragon Age Day 2021. No matter how your year has gone, I just hope that today you can celebrate everything that Dragon Age means to you and commemorate this franchise. To celebrate myself, I wanted to create this video and just share a little bit more about what Dragon Age means to me as a person and as a creator. Of course, the games mean so much to me in so many different ways, so I figured that I would share multiple stories of how Dragon Age has really shaped me. I'm also going to be going off the script for this one so hopefully this will turn out to be quite a wholesome meaningful video. Anyway let's just get into this. So I got into the Dragon Age series when I was about 11 or 12 years old dare I say and I played Dragon Age Origins first and this was through an Amazon owned postal rental service that was called Love Film and I think it was a UK exclusive kind of package and it was kind of the future of blockbusters you know instead of physically going to the store you would instead just apply a list of what games and movies you would like to come to you monthly via post and you would get at least two of those a month. And because my family is quite a big family, we weren't always abundant with cash. We always just rented instead of actually buying things outright. So I would always be renting games and never really committing and making the purchase. And so around this time when I was 11, 12, I'm thinking it's 2010, 2011, I got introduced into role playing games. And that was an absolute brand new discovery for me because I was introduced into this game called Mass Effect 2. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but this was my first ever role playing game. And I immediately just fell in love with the format, the style, the character customization, and the choices and that led me into my complete discovery of Bioware and Dragon Age. Having played Mass Effect 1 and 2 and I think I spent my six weeks holiday just replaying both those games when I was about 12, I then decided to look at what Bioware had done recently and that was the Dragon Age franchise. And so I decided to rent out Dragon Age Origins via Love Film. And I just remember really enjoying the game in my youth but I never quite made it that far into the game. I made it to the Circle Tower quest line. but I always remember the narrative completely took me. I was immediately intrigued by just how epic and grandiose it was with its dark fantasy tones and I always specifically remember the religious exposition of the game. And obviously now as a Dragon Age fan I realise this but the only prominent character I remembered was Duncan. Good old Duncan in that initial cutscene. But yeah I liked it a lot of course I was 12 years old I wasn't that mature I was just getting into RPGs I didn't really know that much about narratives and overarching stories and I couldn't really put two and two together. I was Surprisingly I was actually quite a gormless silly kid. Though that might not actually be surprising I don't know. But I just wasn't hooked at that age and of course because we were renting the game at the time I only had like a week or two to actually finish the game and I didn't get to that point but I always remember Dragon Age Origins leaving a really good mark on me as a young teen. Anyways while Dragon Age didn't sell it for me at that time I was heavily invested in Mass Effect and I actually followed up the launch of Mass Effect 3 which was a fantastic time. Following up with Mass Effect 3 and its DLCs and the multiplayer in 2013 it, oh, it was just a joyous time of me remembering playing Xbox 360 with all my friends and just experiencing Mass Effect 3's multiplayer and then the Citadel DLC that came out in 2013. And it will have been just after the Citadel DLC came out that it was E3 2013 and that was when we had the first ever reveal trailer for Dragon Age Inquisition where Morrigan was on and it was a CGI where you could see Iron Ball and you could see Cassandra and it was obviously revealing Inquisition's plotline. And at that point when I had watched that trailer I was like all right I'm going to dedicate myself to Dragon Age because this trailer, this is a game that I want to be invested in. You know, these characters, this story, the graphics, the Frostbite engine, I want to be in this. I want to be, I want to be interested in this again. I really want to put my soul and heart into it. I want to get invested just like I did with Mass Effect. And so I did. 2013, I got a new laptop that I originally had bought for the Elder Scrolls Online. But uh, if you played the Elder Scrolls Online and it's beta back in the day, it was really bad. It's an amazing game right now. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. But when I had bought my laptop, I just did not like Elder Scrolls Online. So I had this spare laptop going around with decent integrated graphics. I think it was a HP. And I just bought all the Dragon Age games, Origins and 2, obviously, Inquisition wasn't out yet. And I just binged all of them in that summer of 2013. And the escapism was amazing and much needed at the time. I have what I would say is quite an obsessive personality. You know, Dragon Age, Taylor Swift, Birdie, Doctor Who. I always latch on to a certain hyperfixation at a certain time. And for me, it was Dragon Age. I was drawing Liliana, I was painting her oil paints, I then proceeded to paint the Josephine's tarot card for a college project. I drew all the companions when they were being revealed on the websites with their initial portraits. I was absolutely happy fixated in Inquisition. And then the game finally came out and I think for me it was November 21st because it did have a different date for EU and UK. Obviously I think Americans got it on the 18th and uh, me not knowing that you could set your time to New Zealand on the Xbox One played it three days later in Brit time. But yeah, to this 
this day, Inquisition is absolutely one of, if not my favorite games of all time. I just have so many fond memories and experiences with it. Obviously, that's why I'm still creating content, but it was released in November, and at that time, it was a really rough time for my 16-year-old self. My aunt had recently passed away, and my granddad was also really, really ill, and unfortunately passed away in the following months after that release. Not to mention that at the time, I had just started college, and while I did have some really solid friendships there, I was starting to develop into new ones, and I just wasn't comfortable in my own skin. I really wasn't. I was developing a lot of social anxiety, and I just wasn't, you know, you see, while you're 16, I just wasn't comfortable with making new friends and really leaping into that. And Inquisition really was a comfort for me at that time. I just had this entire escapism at the perfect time for me. But when my real social life was actually dwindling at that point, and when I wasn't really fitting in, Inquisition released with all of these amazing characters, and these friendships and relationships that you could form, providing some of the best friends with its amazing roster of companions and characters. It made me feel fulfilled when I was at my weakest, and it showed me how to break through those situations by just facing my fears and putting myself out there, actually battling my inner demons. And since then, and actually just after Inquisition released, I did confront those fears, and I developed and built strong friendships in college that are incredibly strong, I would say, to this day. And I've got to give my college a huge amount of credit here because literally a couple of months after Inquisition's release, I think it was March, they organised a trip to go to Newcastle Comic Con, which is in the north of England, and I physically met Gareth David Lloyd, the voice actor of Solas. Probably before he voice acted Solas's dialogue in Trespasser, I don't know the time frame of that, but given that that DLC released in like September 2015, I imagine he may have not recorded the dialogue, but regardless of that, I met Gareth David Lloyd, and he was so, so kind. And I have this awkward photo to show where my hair's awful and I look like a mess, but this is just pubescent 16 year old Jack. But honestly, he straight up just put his arm around me and smiled brightly, and it was just, oh my goodness, it was incredible to meet him. Probably the first iconic celebrity that I had met. And as a huge Solas and Doctor Who fan, man, meeting him and being so kind, he was phenomenal and just increased my love for both Torchwood, Doctor Who and Dragon Age. So yeah, I've really grown in my teenhood with Dragon Age. I've learned a lot from these games, to building up my own social skills, to even new words. I remember when, I think it's Cassandra, when there's a scene when you get Cole and he appears on the table after you do Fern for Redoubt. I think she calls Cole altruistic or she says something like that. And I just remember learning so many new words like altruistic from Dragon Age and just Bioware as a whole and then using those in contexts surrounding me probably to sound a bit pretentious but just be like hey I learned a new word and I think that even from those experiences that's actually made me even more into a writer to learn new words to adapt those words I've really found my fitting in terms of when I wanted my career path to also be a creator but to even aspire to even further to be a writer and that does come from the experiences I've had with Dragon Age and what else have I learned I've learned to push myself fight those inner fears I've learned to relate to characters like Solas, like Alistair, being a goofball, it's okay if people don't like you, and, and also just to feel comfortable with myself and also escaping into a world when the real world is harsh. It's okay to escape and just to play Dragon Age. You know, you need a break for a good couple of hours. I don't learn politics and morality from video games. I have other sources for that. However, I do thoroughly enjoy the conversations that Bioware in particular bring out, especially politically, and how we can actually contextualize those debates into deep, meaningful conversations, really behind behind the game's texts and topics. The majors, the Templars, and how it could represent so many political nuances. You look at magic, and you look at the systemic organizations of Fadus, and we can just have so many deep and amazing developing conversations about those without going into a full-on debate revolving real-life politics. But I think the most important thing that Dragon Age means to me is just that it's made me a YouTube creator and given me this amazing community. The fact that people like yourself are watching this, that you actually care about my content, that you will see a notification and be so excited just to watch one of my videos. That is the biggest thing to me. Leading into Inquisition's release, when I was spamming the games and drawing Liliana and just getting obsessed with those conversations, I was constantly watching Dragon Age YouTuber creators at the time, you know, Lady Insanity, Ability Drain and Biofan. And each of those creators have inspired me in so many different ways to create my own content. And it blows my mind that today, that each of those creators actually follow me on Twitter and have seen and interacted with my own content. But even more so, that people see me in that same category. That completely humbles me. It does not make me arrogant or cocky. It makes me feel humbled. And I just want to bless every single person with better content and improve myself content-wise every single day. But even further, and I think just as a huge shout out because I've never really mentioned this in a video, I think I've mentioned it on podcasts, but just my favorite YouTube content creator of all time and my biggest influence of creating content getting me into this channel has been Mr. Matty Plays. I have watched his content probably since 2013, 2012 and he has been a huge inspiration
creation on my own content creation endeavors. And the fact that Mr. Matty actually shouted me out on, I think it was a video late last year, we was talking about Mass Effect. And I'm just gonna quickly play that clip right here. I feel like it's more likely we're gonna see Dragon Age 4 first. That seems further along. We saw it at least in some form of gameplay, very lightly, just very brief concept gameplay. We saw a more extensive lore driven trailer so there is more there and by the way shout out to my buddy jack Daw. if you're looking for really positive exciting informative bioware content he's a huge dragon age fan I want to point you all in the direction of his channel real quick here if you think this video is a little too negative for your taste i get it and you're looking for a little more bioware hype that is a perfect place to go he does not have nearly enough exposure so quick shout out to him but anyway ladies and gentlemen but yeah that honestly just blows my mind that the creator who i have watched for nine eight Eight plus years follows me has watched my videos and actually respects my content that is just one of the defining points of my youtube career i hope one day maybe to collab with him i think that's maybe me thinking too big for my boots but the fact that he actually cares about my content it, it just you know they say never meet your heroes because it's all you know it, it doesn't end the way you want it to but this has been me meeting my hero and it's been fantastic so i just want to say thank you so much mr matty for inspiring me to create and for just giving a damn about smaller creators like myself but yeah, some other experiences that have just defined Dragon Age for me, I'm going to go through a lot of these just quickly because I know I have so many things to say and I don't want this video to be too long, but I received a press copy of Twinter Nights in 2020 and that was my first ever material of Dragon Age received early and it was just euphoric, you know, to actually have a book published and sent to you early because even publisher companies, like I think it was Titan Books, are aware of my influence and they're like, you know what, have a free copy. That was fantastic. Patrick Weeks shouted me out in 2020. You know, I asked them a question and they were like, yep i know who you are jack Doe. i've seen your videos and then they responded to my question oh my goodness that made my entire year john epler has been so kind to me just with tweets so that they watch my videos so many other developer interactions i've had where they've just been incredibly kind to me i've interviewed nunzio de philippus and christina weir the absolute two phenomenal fantastic individuals in this dragon age space who are creating the dragon age comics and just serving us incredibly well with material while we wait for the next game and they're just absolutely lovely lovely people with an adorable dog autumn and i just just, I'm so humbled that they let me interview them. And just, you know, Dragon Age means so much to me in terms of the real life influence of the characters. I can be prideful at times. I, yeah, relate to Solas. And sometimes I'm just an absolute goofball like Alistair. And I just find parts of my identity in those characters. I don't make them my entire identity, but I see parts of myself in those characters. And I love that, you know? I know that's what, why everybody likes and dislikes certain characters because they see themselves in them. And it just makes you feel wholesome. And oh, I, I would do that. I wouldn't do that. And you can have an attachment to those characters. And I think just one of the biggest things for has been the amazing community and friends that I have built for this channel. My Discord, the Twitter spaces, the YouTube, all of it. Being able to be a silly, goofy clown or tinfoil lad online and people just go with it and they love it. The Twitter spaces I am in are amazing. You know, just seeing so many talented individuals and just being seen as a mutual among those. It's incredible. And it has been the thing that has got me through this year are the amazing, talented individuals who are in this community. And I just want to say a thank you to every single person in my comments who has just made this community amazing, who has just just really supporting Dragon Age, supporting me as a creator, who are just really defining this community, who are making it a great and safe place to be in, to really just prosper and enjoy Dragon Age. That's what Dragon Age ultimately means to me. It's to be a creator, but to actually be a creator and having a huge part in this community, being a culmination of that, adding to this community, which is so talented and incredible. Being involved in it, it's a fantastic community most of the time. And it's just incredible having a day like this where we can celebrate that. So I just wanna say thank you so much. The biggest thing that Dragon Age means to me is the fact that we have this, this community, this safe space, and this amazing place in my YouTube, on Twitter, just to celebrate Dragon Age and what it means to all of us. And that we can come around at a time like this and just celebrate what it means to be a Dragon Age fan. I apologize if that was so much cheese that you couldn't even handle it, but that's just who I am unapologetically. I am a cheesy, tinfoily, clowning, silly goofball who loves to talk about Dragon Age. And just to be excited and cautiously optimistic for the next Dragon Age games, as we celebrate what the series has done for us in our lives so far. Of course, the Game Awards is almost here. I will be streaming that with FussleCon on Thursday, but I will post a link to that as soon as I set up the live stream. But I hope you all are taking care of yourself this Dragon Age day. And just, yeah, let me know in the comments down below what Dragon Age means to you. Put your heart on your sleeve and just tell me what Dragon Age means to you. I think that'll be awesome just to have this nice sensitive time just to celebrate what Dragon Age means to everybody. But until the Game Awards on the 9th of December, as we stream it live, hopefully I will see you then. But until then, I have been Jackdaw, and I should go. Wahoo, wahoo, wahoo.